What's going on guys, it's Melty here and welcome back to another F1 2021 My Team Career Mode episode. Uh, episode number 4 here today for the Spanish Grand Prix. Uh, if you missed the last episode, how much of an episode, I forgot to click record. So that's uh, always nice, but you can see here we do have the opportunity now to get our secondary sponsor in and uh, really we're just going to be looking for something that we can achieve so we're going to go for the highest weekly income uh, and use reap here or however you say that uh the goal is to out qualify our rival the goal bonus is a hundred and two thousand uh our rival on track is Giovinazzi currently uh and we've been consistently beating him so hopefully that should be a pretty easy one to beat but uh, now we're just going to go and have a look at the R&D side of things, uh, 372 points, we click recommend upgrade, uh, it doesn't flag us to anything so that means that we don't have any upgrades okay. to do, well, but our roll dampers upgrade did come through, so that is well, going to well, mean we have strong. less tyre wear now, uh, so always good to have upgrades uh, chasing our rivals more, uh, but now at the race weekend, uh, and our ICE 69% wear there, so we do change that out before qualifying, uh, which we are gonna head to, head to right now. So coming to the end of our first hot lap here, uh, been a relatively okay lap, there's a lot of improvement to be found, uh, but in the cockpit there, and uh, if you were watching the little b-roll clip I guess it is, uh, we did, we are running a special helmet for the Spanish Grand Prix, a uh, nice red and yellow one, but uh, we are now out on our, our second hot lap, uh, C gaining just half tenth there through turn one already our first lap like I said it was uh, there's a lot of improvement to be found and hopefully this is gonna be the lap to do it as uh, keeping it quite tidy pushing right to the edge of the track limits there as you saw with the front left tyre but maybe put down the power a little bit too early so we drifted uh, a little bit wide which wasn't the best for us but now coming through the uh, last sector uh seven tenths up now so we really just need to keep it tidy make sure we improve maybe clip that sausage a little bit too much there and uh, we've lost a fair chunk of time through that final sector i think about two tenths overall but we're gonna cross the line and we are gonna jump into p16 so we are in danger uh but not too badly you see kimmy there just under a tenth ahead of us uh and Lance Stroll just over a tenth ahead of us. If we want to secure a spot in Q2, we need to uh, get out there and get a very decent lap on. But as you can see, we only have three sets of softs. Uh, we've used both tyres recommended for Q1, so we are going to have to use a set recommended for Q2, which will mean if we do get through, we will be starting p16 unless there are grip penalties as uh, there's really no point in us competing on mediums uh, we'll just be putting unnecessary wear on the engine but two tenths three there four tenths coming through the final chicane uh on our good lap we drop down to p19 eight can now p17 so he's out of quality and we jump up the order we did four tenths but are we did we secure a spot in Q2? Yes, we did. Narrowly, about half a tenth separating me and George Russell Jack Aitken, P18. Uh, that's pretty good, so let's head to the grid. The Spanish Grand Prix has been a permanent fixture on the Formula One calendar for over 30 years now, and for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996? That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari and we've had many more iconic moments since. It's a sellout crowd of 140,000 here today as we await lights out for the 730 metre sprint down to turn one of this 2.9 mile racetrack. 
Overtaking is challenging through these 16 corners, but there's still a lot of high-speed excitement to be found, including the flat-out Turn 3 and the terrifying blind right of Turn 9. It's race day yet again, and joining me for a chat, Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching for as they go down into Turn 1? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve-wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start, and this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space, and finding your breaking point into Turn 1 as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Perez, Charles Leclerc and Norris, Sainz, Ricardo, Gasly and Yuki Tsunoda, Fernando Alonso, Vettel, Esteban Ocon, and Stroll, the owner driver, Russell, Jack Aitken, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Latifi, Mazepin, Raikkonen, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty, and Mick Schumacher. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. So you can see we did have a driver there taking a grid penalty, so that bumps us further up the grid. Uh, it was Kimi taking a grid penalty already, so Alfa Romeo's durability obviously worse than ours, which is always nice to hear, but that's the strategy sorted. Uh, set up seems fine, so we are going to get ready for lights out. We're now waiting on the grid here in, I think, our highest grid spot so far this season, and it's lights out, and we are racing in Spain. It was a uh, fairly decent start there. We jumped Lance Stroll already, and we are now on the hunt for Sebastian Vettel, who is ahead of us side by side with Esteban Ocon, I think that is, as uh, everyone gets through turn one fairly cleanly. Uh, the two Alpine cars side by side as we almost we get brake checked there by Seb just a little bit and now we are on the outside of Lance Stroll, can we clear him? Yes we can just about and now we are going to try and attack Seb, narrowly avoid the back of him having to uh, use the tarmac on the outside of the track there to avoid hitting him but he squeezed us out and we are going to now dive down the inside of him, turn 3, leaving him no space on the exit, very aggressive move but it has worked and now we're uh, we're going to have a look at Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon, see if we can get past them. We are still on the push for uh, consistent points. As, oh my god, we've just caught the curve very wrong. Narrowly avoided the wall. I think we might have made contact with Sebastian Vettel there. Uh, yeah, we just we did get one in. Hopefully Seb doesn't have damage. I know that we don't, but uh, that really is not good as the uh, audio has cut out. I don't know why that is so uh, I'm sorry about that but uh, now we're gonna have a look on Lance Stroll but that's not gonna happen it's just a bit of a slipstream train now where uh, Spain famous for being a, uh, a fairly still race it's not the most exciting one on the calendar but uh, the strategy we're doing is a one-stop uh, hopefully it'll work uh, mediums to hards uh, but you know if the cars around us uh, for example Alonso, Stroll, uh, Ocon if they start to box early uh, we will but look at the closing speed to us in, compared to the cars ahead somebody must have damage at the front of this train I think that is an Alf Tower. yes it is it is Pierre Gasly holding everybody up an absolute treat for us so we are gonna try and pierce through this uh, pierce through this train as uh, the AI really aren't good at overtaking each other when there's a cart with damage but now we are on the straight DRS open it could get a little bit spicy just up ahead as we have the two Alpine cars going side by side we're on the inside of Lance Stroll and we've got Lance Stroll can we get Esteban Ocon as well yes we can oh just caught the curb wrong there again really not having a good run with curb we're gonna go around the outside of three cars around that hairpin still not done on Ricardo but it is now and a very quick move on Pierre not giving him any time to uh, even think about defending from us 
so now we are definitely racing four points. P9, we've gained a lot of time on Alonso, but two laps later, he has caught up by a second. Yuki Snowder there in the pitch. You can see him just dropping down the order. Uh, Fernando pulls out to the right. We're going to give him a bit of a squeeze. Can we hold him off? Going to hang it round the outside, and we live to fight another day. At his home GP, we're giving him a very good fight uh, for the the low end of point provisionally nothing is uh, happening yet but Fernando definitely does have the pace on us and he also has DRS and so does his teammate Ocon behind us is he close enough to make a move here he's pulled out he's on the inside and he has cleared us into turn one so now we really need to just chase him get him back with DRS or just raw pace on on track but uh, end of the lap or a lap later uh, he is nine tenths ahead so the Alpine car uh, in the hands of Fernando Alonso definitely faster I think we do just about have the pace on Ocon there maybe Fernando's morale is just higher because it's his uh, his home GP or you know just his car set up really really well but Fernando is in the pits now so is Carlos Sainz and uh, we are going to push push this lap and we are going to react. We're going to make the call to box this lap. And uh, we really do need to get ahead of Fernando with this with this stop. Uh, he was about five, six seconds ahead. Can we, uh, you know, maybe, maybe even get back ahead of him if he gets unlucky with traffic? Or our laps just generally faster? Uh, Ocon though still keeping us with us this lap so he's obviously pushing a fair amount as well and we dive into the pits and Esteban follows us hopefully Jack Aitken doesn't follow us as it's the pit window for everybody and uh, he has we made the call to stop so I don't know what Jack and uh, his side of the garage are thinking here but he's going to lose a lot of time now where realistically I think the team should prioritise my chances uh, as I've got more of a chance of scoring points but Fernando uh, I think he's even extended that gap we haven't gained any time on him at all there but uh, still got a lot of the race left but uh, after lap 16 where we came out of the pits uh, really nothing happened at all so we've skipped to lap 26 and you can see here here come the, uh, the front runner starting to pierce through us all and uh, we can use this to our advantage uh, if we let them overtake everybody through the tight twisty stuff uh, we're gonna let them pass on the straight it's, uh, and it does work a treat there we now have a 1.4 second gap as look at them cars behind us looking very very aggressive uh, and Ocon really not benefiting from the uh, blue flags at all as he has dropped right down into p13 i think he's lost about five three four five positions there as uh, there goes verstappen past us and uh, lewis will be further back uh, coming through those guys behind us uh end of lap 29 now uh Really, our main threat is Sonoda and Ricardo. I'm not too threatened by Esteban Ocon at this moment in time until he starts really pushing and picking up the pace. But here comes Yuki Sonoda. He's got DRS moves to the left. And oh, his engines blew up. His engines blew up right next to us. And that's uh, panic down Ricardo and myself a little bit there. So that is Yuki out of this race. Uh, in uh, really not how they would have wanted it to go. His... Uh, ending just went pop out of absolutely no way was flying down that straight and then it just went up in smoke so uh, hopefully that's not a bad omen for all of us using Honda power as Daniel Ricciardo now looking at a move on us as we've locked up we've gone a little bit deep we're not going to use the full width of the track so that will not that will mean Daniel Ricciardo won't make a move but we've gone deep into the hairpin as well making lots of mistakes he's feeling the pressure from him and we nearly make contact into the chicane he is ahead now we're gonna wait gonna try and get him on the drs straight or into turn one if we can get close and we're gonna slipstream him right down the straight open drs ers is turned on we're gonna drain the battery right down the straight can we get close enough 
into turn one. The gap is rapidly closing, about two and a half tenths now. We're not close enough, but we're going to go for a dive anyway, and we just about back out in time. That was uh, probably not the smartest move. That could have gone very badly for both both parties involved. But uh, look who it is behind us. That's Esteban Ocon. He's uh, came back through uh, our fight with Ricard, obviously. Uh, not helping that, but he's 2.6 behind now, and uh, he could quite possibly come and steal this one point off us that we are going to be fighting for, but it's, look at uh, how old the team is, this one point could do a lot for us in the standings, I think we are actually ahead of Alpine in the standings, possibly, don't hold me to it, but uh, we're not, we have... Seconds. One lap left. When we cross the line, we have one lap left as we have been lapped by uh, Verstappen and Bottas and Hamilton. So uh, we have lost a racing lap as Ocon's took about half a second out through us, through this uh, final sector. So he is really pushing, getting the driving the wheels off of the Alpine. So maybe it's not just quick in Fernando's hands, quicker in both of the hands, but Fernando was pushing a little bit more than Esteban. Uh, so will he, will Esteban get ahead of us? We're going to have to wait and see uh, on on this lap. Uh, took another four tenths out of us on the straight as well. So their car obviously very fast in a straight line. But we're going to skip ahead to the final sector is now only a second behind as Valtteri Bottas comes home to win the Spanish Grand Prix. Verstappen sets a fastest lap, but if we make a mistake through the chicane, it's all over. Our point chances and hopes are all over as we're now coming round the final corner. Esteban has not got us, and we come home for a very hard fought P10. Right, not not the, the most the exciting Spanish Grand Prix, but it definitely wasn't the worst, as we do also achieve driver of the day. I think that was uh, thoroughly deserved. So Mercedes have won it, and what a great race it was. So Anthony, what made the difference out there today? I'd say it was down once again to good consistent driving, nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team's strategies. They got all of these things right today and the results speak for themselves. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. This result narrows the gap between our championship leader and the rest of the standings. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? I'm going to give it to the owner-driver today. They did a great job at getting the most out of their tyres without losing pace, something that's a very handy skill to have in modern-day Formula 1. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Another team that excelled today was Williams, who make further progress up the table. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. So that is us, P10, one point from 15th on the grid. We uh, we were very, very aggressive, very dominant on some cars there. But that's it for today's episode. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit short. There wasn't as much action as I was hoping for in the race. But if you enjoyed, please make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.